recrystallization of last week's product. So recrystallization is a purification technique based on our solids solubility um, in a solvent and the concentration or lack thereof in, the, in that solvent. Okay. Um, when solid products form, they usually do so very quickly and they can trap lots of the other things that are involved in a reaction. Um, last week it could have been sodium hydroxide or HCl, it could, would have been the sal cyclic acid that was precipitating out along with it. Um, and so solid products can be really kind of dirty, have lots of impurities with them. Okay. So we want to dissolve them in a minimum volume of fresh solvent. Now there's no other acid or base or whatever it is that was in the previous reaction mixture. Now it's just our solid and our solvent molecules. And so when the solid ute dissolves and it lets all those impurities go out in the solution, now they're a much lower concentration. And the chances that they get caught up when the solid reforms is much less. Okay? Hence the term recrystallization. We're making crystals, getting rid of them, and then having them form again. Also, by cooling things down a little bit more slowly, we can allow the crystals to form more slowly than they did in the original reaction mixture. And here again, that's going to tend to promote not grabbing onto impurities and so a cleaner crystal. Um, however, as this uh, slide says now, you have to be careful about your uh, recovery. Um, once the solids dissolve, sometimes they don't necessarily want to crystallize back out. Um, and so there are some recrystallization steps um, where a 50 or 60% yield is considered good. Um, and so uh, you have to be really careful about the volume the, of solvent that you use because the more volume of solvent that you use, the worse your recovery is going to be. Okay. So to, in order to recrystallize, you want to add a minimum volume of solvent. Okay, start with what the PDF calls for. You may warm it gently on a hot plate, but that's warm it gently. It should not be, the water should not be evaporating up the sides or boiling, okay? If it starts, if you can warm it gently, it doesn't all wanna dissolve, start adding half a mil, okay, of water at a time until you reach the maximum amount. If not all of it has then dissolved, not all of the product has dissolved um, by the time you get to the maximum, with gentle warming, just try to get it as fine as you can with a glass stirring rod, and then take it off the heat, set it to the side, let it cool to room temperature, then place it in the ice to promote crystallization. Collect the crystals by vacuum filtration again. Um, this time, once you've got the filter paper cut to fit your Buchner, you want to take it and your book into the instrument room and get a mass on it. Um, you want to have some ice cold water here. Again, the benzoic acid is not particularly soluble in water, but why not encourage it to not dissolve in the water by using cold water. Okay. Dry the product in your drawer over the week. Best suggestion is to slide the filter paper out of the Buchner onto your watch glass. And then next week, you can slide the whole thing right into a weigh boat and then get your uh, mass of product by mass difference because you know how much the filter paper was. Okay. In addition then to determining the mass yield, you want to calculate the percent recovery. You know the volume and the amount of benzoic acid in the toluene that you used. Um, and you want to record a melting point on it. Okay. Hit it correctly in a vial correctly label it according to the instructions in the handout, get it turned in to me in the pink basket with a pink label by midterm. Okay. 